underground parking garage beneath the cobblestone streets of San Sebastian's Old Town in Spain may seem like an unlikely place to showcase Audi's cutting-edge electric vehicle technology. With concrete pillars as robust as a Gothic basilica, parking spaces no wider than a Lancia hatchback, and exits so narrow that even moped riders exit in single file, the new 2025 Audi Q6 e-tron SUV stood out like an American. This modern SUV didn't quite fit in this historic bay of Biscay Beach Town, founded long before the internal combustion engine or electricity. Yet, Audi's technological display demonstrated its ability to blend with the old world as the modern world charges into the future. With the side mirror's power retracted, the parking sensors beeping frantically, and the front and rear camera projections on the 14.9-inch touchscreen display guiding me, I managed to navigate the tight exits without straying from Audi's prescribed route. Measuring nearly 188 inches long, the new 2025 SQ6 and Q6 are large by European city standards but are perfectly sized for the North American luxury car market, where they will debut in November. Despite being made and tested in Europe, this mid-size crossover SUV is designed to appeal to American buyers, where the German brand sells about 40% of its global vehicles. It's no surprise that this five-seat crossover SUV competes with the best-selling Tesla Model Y. However, in terms of build quality, composure, and in-car technology, it surpasses Tesla by a significant margin. Audi Q6 and the PP Premium Platform Electric The new Audi Q6 is built on the brand's PP Premium Platform Electric architecture, which also supports the upcoming Porsche Macung EV and will feature in the RSQ6 and the A6 electric sedan arriving next year. Editors note, to clarify Audi's naming system during this transition, all even-numbered Audi models will be battery electric vehicles, while odd-numbered models will use combustion engines. A standard dual-motor all-wheel drive system will be featured in many future vehicles based on the PP. Driving the Q6 around the hilly roads of northern Spain's Basque Country revealed a balance of power, efficiency, and comfort, making the forgettable Q4 e-tron and the underwhelming Q8 e-tron seem like distant memories. Audi utilizes a 140 kW induction motor on the front axle to assist with takeoff and supplement heavy power demands. When cruising, this motor decouples, allowing the 280 kW permanent magnet synchronous motor on the rear axle to serve as the main propulsion unit. These more compact motors are lighter and require about 30% less installation space compared to those used in the Q4 and Q8. The new motor designs are more efficient, with about half the friction losses of the previous generation. The lighter motors and other efficiencies in the platform help keep the Q6 weight around 5,300 pounds, which is about 300 pounds heavier than AQ7, but 500 pounds lighter than the larger Q8 e-tron. This weight management demonstrates the effectiveness of the second-generation electric platform. The Q6 e-tron produces up to 456 horsepower and accelerates from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 4.9 seconds, while the SQ6 e-tron generates up to 509 horsepower and reaches 0 to 60 miles per hour in 4.1 seconds. The torque output includes 203 lbfd from the induction motor and 428 lbfd from the rear motor. While both have launch control, press brake, floor accelerator, let off brake, the SQ6 packs more of a gut punch, but it's nothing too abrupt. It's more of an immediate, expected acceleration. The five drive modes lend more nuance to the driving experience. Dynamic has a firm pedal response versus the mushy response and efficiency, and each mode affects the steering response as well. One of the more pleasant surprises from the SQ6 was a new steering rack that's connected to the subframe. It has fewer rubber elements and less elasticity, Audi engineers told me. Whatever the case, there's a more direct connection to the road. In the tightness of the parking garage, there was all kinds of resistance so I could better negotiate the millimeters I had to work with, whereas on the winding hilly roads slight inputs result in significant feedback. The drive modes also alter the optional suspension as well. Both models will arrive in the States with steel springs and passive dampers within a 5-link independent suspension, but both Q6 and SQ6 models I'm testing have adjustable adaptive dampers and an air suspension that alters the ride height by about 2.5 inches total. Audi doesn't have US-spec ground clearance at press time, 
but it looks and feels lower than 8 inches. Off-road mode raises it about 1.3 inches, but I wouldn't use it for anything more than getting out of mucky situations on an access road. Efficiency mode lowers it 1.2 inches from comfort for optimal cruising range. Dynamic lowers it 0.8 inch, and an individual mode lets you play with all the things, including shutting off the fake noise and adjusting the myriad safety systems. With its thicker anti-roll bars and stiffer sidewalls on its 285-40 or 21 summer tires, the SQ6 suffers less squish and turns than the Q6, and overall handles with more agility than its 5,300-pound curb weight would suggest. Audi also claps on six piston calipers for more bite on the front brakes, but in most cases, the Q6 models don't use the friction brakes all that much. Audi's latest regenerative braking system. Audi says that 95% of the braking in the Q6 models is handled by the motors, which can capture up to 0.25 g of deceleration. Even when you press down on the brake, it's using both motors to slow down the car first before the friction brakes get called to action. Audi offers up to five Regen brake settings that cast the widest net over possible EV adopters. I prefer B mode in the console gear selector. It enables one pedal driving where stopping is a matter of feathering the accelerator. Once at a full stop, it doesn't creep forward. My co-driver didn't like the abruptness of it. We both played with the paddle shifters that adjust to three levels of braking, with the lowest setting effectively replicating a coast mode like in a gas car. In this setting, my co-driver commented on the lack of initial bite from the pedal then too much bite at about halfway through the pedal travel. I found it predictable enough, though it may take some adjustment. Most owners will find their desired setting of the four options and leave it, or maybe they'll opt for auto mode that modulates Regen braking from the camera system reading the road and traffic ahead. Audi Q6's 100 kWh battery pack and 800 volt architecture. The SQ6 also handles more like a wagon than an SUV due to the low-set 100 kWh battery pack made up of 12 modules of 15 prismatic cells each. It sits 5.9 inches tall on the low floor between the axles, and the more energy-dense nickel-cobalt-manganese lithium-ion battery cells are optimized for a usable 94.4 kWh, so Audi's not holding anything back. The PPE's 800V system accepts a DC fast charge of up to 270 kilowatts. if you can find a public charger pumping electrons at that rate. We don't have to charge it, but Audi estimates a 10 to 80% state of charge in 21 minutes. Or, during the first 10 minutes of charge at that rate it could recoup nearly 135 miles of range. That's fast. Owners can use plug and charge at Electrify America stations that automatically connect to your account so you don't need to swipe a card. Even at an EA station rated at 135 kilowatts, the 800-volt charging system virtually splits into twin 400-volt circuits that can charge in parallel in 35 minutes. At home, on a 40-amp 240-volt AC circuit, the Q6 e-tron's 9.6 kW onboard charger fills the battery in about 10 hours. Audi says a 19.2 kW onboard charger will be made available.